In this video I'll be talking about the design process. Now the design process obviously starts with identifying a problem. This could be from a range of different reasons as to why the problem comes about. It might be for example you're dissatisfied with an existing product or a situation and this is often termed as constructive discontent where you see something as, as faulty and you want to make a change to it. It might be simply to make money so you want to change a product to turn a profit effectively. You might want to help others, as in the case of, for example, uh, Roger Bayliss's Wind Up Radio to help bring information to um, uh, people in poorer parts of the world who perhaps can't afford batteries or access to electricity. Um, and it might be simply for an exploration of science and technology where something new comes about and you want to help push this to create new design products. Now, as I said, the design process pretty much always starts with identifying the problem. Once you've identified the problem, the first thing would probably be to do is to write a design brief uh, that kind of sets out some of the um, basics as to what is going to be designed. So you might be talking about what the, the product's basically going to do or its functional requirements. You might be talking about how it looks, its material safety, you know, any factors that might be important at this stage, okay? Following on from the brief, you then have to work on developing kind of a specification and kind of thinking about all the different uh, factors. One person who kind of made this into the whole design process themselves is a designer and engineer called Stuart Pugh who designed something called Pugh's Plates, okay, or a guide to design. Now, this is one way of kind of looking at the design process in many different factors and ensuring that you've got a specification that includes all the factors of importance. It's not, in my opinion, something that you should rigidly stick to, but it's something you might want to look at. Now, once you've designed a, or created a specification, then becomes obviously the design process and trying to pick off some of these design specification criteria through sort of analysis and through understanding what the problem is in its essence. Now this will obviously lead on to a range of different pieces of research. You will probably have done lots of this in your actual um, controlled assessment yourself but effectively a lot of this branch is around market research so it could be through surveys, interviews or questionnaires. I mean this could be done in multiple different ways over the post using telephone or even modern methods like through email or or sort of Skype conversations or anything like this but getting information from the consumer in either a, a sort of a personal structured or sort of partially structured way is going to help you get some information about the consumer and the user of the product themselves. You might also be observing the people using the product either in their own environment so you might look at someone literally I don't know shaving to find out something about how they use a razor or how they wash their face or clean the sink for example or it could be in more dedicated sort of a laboratory where you're actually doing it under some sort of controlled conditions and setting the requirements within what you're actually watching in the observation. Another thing that's sometimes used is actually a process known as body storming where you are role playing the process of a particular product and it might therefore outline some of the problems or some of the solutions I suppose so you can see the actual process and see what the problems are in a, in a real context. Other forms of research you might be familiar with obviously is analysing designs similar to yours to find out something about maybe the materials, how they function, the mechanisms and things. You might call this product analysis. Understanding information about materials and components through database searches or, or, or information online or in books for example. You might be testing materials or components or actually field testing aspects of the product or the materials. You might also want to at certain points to develop your design research into sort of anthropometrics to ensure that the product is ergonomic and can fit the group of people that you're intended to aim the product at. Now once you've undertaken a range of research you'll generally then move into generation ideas and there's various different methods to help you come up with ideas. I mean some people just chance upon ideas, others will, will have an act of insight where they'll just come up with an idea. It might be through associative thinking, trying to put things together through ad adaptation or getting one idea and transferring it to another idea. Other methods include analogy where you're sort of using something in a different situation or even combining two products into one to kind of add additional functions or something like this. So there's various different ways and designers have their own ways of doing this. Some people like to brainstorm, some people like to work in teams or individually and you know this is something quite personal to you as a designer but if you're in a team you might obviously have a range of different strategies to approach this. Now once you've generated the ideas you will then take some of these and develop them on. Now the development of ideas could be through scale models or mock-ups in either physical terms or even you know nowadays 
days using 3D printing or rapid prototyping of methods to kind of bring something forwards. And you know, some of this development could be virtually done as well, obviously with the the use of various CAD packages like Autodesk's Inventor for example we can obviously mock things up virtually and also carry out some of the testing like materials testing to give us more information when an idea has gone through all this research generation and development you'll then go into manufacture the product the making of the product if this is on a small scale like a designer maker you'll be designing and making the product yourself but as I've said in other videos quite often you'll go to a specialist company to make certain products and a lot of this obviously using ICT or specialist manufacturing equipment that will be outsourced to a global manufacturing community where you can get things produced at the, the optimum price point to the quality you're expecting. Finally, once you've made the product and it's, it's gone through all of this aspect of this design process, the final stage is normally testing. And often you'll test the prototype before it goes into final production to make sure there's absolutely no problems with it at all. You might also be referring back to your product design specification or your material specification specifications to ensure that your design meets every single aspect of this by speaking it through this way you'd kind of think that design is a linear process that starts with the problem and then ends with the kind of evaluation but it's not like this it's quite iterative and this is what makes it difficult to kind of teach as a subject because you're always moving in circles almost or or going backwards and forwards in the design process as required i might design a product and then realize i need to know something about materials so i might look at materials or i might need to think about my user or get my user to test that aspects of it before I go into production and all of these things just allow this iterative process to be a more closer fit than the linear model that it might be presented in this video.